the port of Apapa on the lagoon of Lagos in Nigeria, an extremely important center of international trade in West Africa. Out of the many leading international contractors who offered tenders for the contract, it was Cogefard, Costruzione Generale Farsura of Milan, which was chosen for the considerable task of constructing the second extension to this already thriving port, an extension which has increased the annual cargo potential from 15 and a half million tons to 23 million tons. One of the first necessities at the outset of work in March 1963 was the provision of suitable offices and lodgings for about 50 Italian engineers, supervisors and skilled workmen employed on the job, plus various facilities for over 1,000 Nigerian workers. To provide the considerable quantities of stone, ballast and crushed aggregates required, a total of nearly 380,000 cubic yards, a quarry was operated about 62 miles from Apapa at Abiokuta. Daily trains brought the stone to the construction site in specially designed wagons. One of the key operations here was the unloading of the aggregates and their distribution to the various sectors during the different stages of work. Concrete mixing being one of the most important. This plant has produced about 108,000 cubic yards of concrete, no less than 95,000 cubic yards of which was used to prefabricate the blocks bonded into the wall of the wharf. At the height of operations, production reached an average of 37 blocks a day. In order for the concrete to reach the desired degree of maturity, the blocks, each with an average weight of 20 tons, were left to cure for 20... From the stackyard, the blocks were sent to the loading jetty by means of special self-propelled block carriers with pneumatic tires. At the jetty, the blocks were loaded onto barges and towed by tugs to the site where they were to be placed under water. This block placing crane has a capacity of 25 tons and a straddle of 50 feet and advances along the wharf as it is built.
each block was slung and placed under the direct supervision of divers, thus ensuring its perfect bonding into the face of the wall under construction. An extremely difficult operation allowing a tolerance of only one inch. During the building of the wharf wall with a total length of 1,039 yards, 10,620 blocks were laid, entailing the production of more than 800 blocks per month. 7,500 cubic yards of concrete, corresponding to a monthly advance of 82 yards. The wall of blocks is firmly based on a layered stone rubble foundation 65 feet wide and 5 feet thick. Each of the various strata is formed of a different sized rubble and was carefully leveled by the divers. Parallel to the wharf at a distance of about 500 yards, an artificial rubble retaining bank was built, having an average cross section of approximately 120 square yards and involving approximately 120 cubic yards of stone per running yard. The wharf wall is made up of transverse sections lightly bonded together by a tongue and groove connection, each consisting of 18 or 19 blocks laid in seven strata. The height of the wall is just over 38 feet, of which 32 are constantly below water level and two constantly above. Using powerful dredgers, the zone between the wharf wall and the rubble retaining bank was filled in with sand dredged from the area immediately in front of the wharf under construction, thus deepening the navigation channel. So, at the same time, a land area of approximately 431,000 square yards was obtained for new port services and a deeper dock was provided for larger vessels. On this area, six large sheds for the storage of goods in transit or deposit have been constructed. Each shed has a clear span of 150 feet and a length of just over 426 feet, providing a total area of over 7,000 square yards of covered storage space. The sheds are constructed of pre-stressed reinforced concrete set on foundation formed of groups of prefabricated concrete piles. On the groups of piles, plinths were constructed together with the columns on which pre-stressed, pre-cast girders were later to rest and hold up the roof. Whilst the columns were being cast, tubular scaffolding was erected for the temporary support of the pre-stressed girders at mid-span. At this stage of the work, the casting and construction of all necessary prefabricated elements was completed. Among these, the main girders of the sheds required particular attention, each of them being 121 feet long. 220 girders weighing 20 tons each were prefabricated and tensioned with special steel wires. This work was carried out at the scheduled rate of one beam per day. During period, the girders were taken from the prefabrication yard to the building site by means of a special carrier. and here they were set in position by a specially adapted crane at the rate of more than five units daily. The 
The erection of the prefabricated framework of a shed and its subsequent covering with asbestos cement sheets was in this way completed in approximately six weeks. designed by Signor Dozzi, are an important example of pre-stressed, prefabricated structures. At the same time, work went on to provide all the elements necessary for the complete operation of all port services. This included the superstructure on the wharf wall, including a subway for pipes supplying the ships with water, fuel oil, telephone lines and electric power. 150,000 square yards of concrete pavement, roads and yards. 4,600 yards of drains. 4,070 yards of water pipes and a water reservoir. 1,650 yards of pipes for telephone network and electric power cables. Over 90,000 cubic yards of stone flooring base. Fourteen thousand three hundred yards of railway line on concrete slab foundations or wooden sleepers. One thousand one hundred yards of rails for the port cranes. 's handing over to the Nigerian Port Authority of the various berths and sheds with their relative service areas took place considerably earlier than the date scheduled in the contract, in this way greatly facilitating the planned improvements and the predicted increase in traffic. The head of the newly reclaimed area of the wharf was closed by a double wall made of steel sheet piles totaling a length of about 420 yards. Larsen piles, each 65 feet long and weighing two tons, were used and these were lifted and placed in pairs by adequate cranes. The cranes were specially equipped so that the piles could be placed by jetting or by steam or compressed air hammers. The piles of the exterior wall were anchored to a second sheet pile wall with 250 steel tie rods varying between 70 and 142 feet long with a diameter of three inches. The driving of the piles and their anchoring with tie rods took six months reaching the daily production rate of between 30 to 40 piles. 2,900 tons of sheet piles and 280 tons of tie rods were used. In addition to this, special paints and coatings were used to protect the sheet piles from the corrosive action of seawater. Complete in all its equipment, mooring bollards, wooden and tubular fenders, the wharf is now ready for passenger ferries and pilot cutters, as well as ocean-going cargo and passenger vessels of various types and displacement. The works entrusted to Kojefar by the Nigerian Ports Authority were designed and supervised by Messrs. Coode and Partners of London. time of completion was 44 months and an initial sum of 4,650,000 pounds was enlarged in June 1965 by a further sum of 1,200,000 pounds to cover the addition of a fifth berth to the original four in the contract. Because of the particular construction methods adopted, Kojefar was able to complete the additional work within the time limit originally established, 
that is, in a total of nine million working hours. Thus, in little more than three and a half years, yet another example of Italian overseas construction work has been successfully brought to a conclusion and takes its place in the long list of achievements for Italian engineers. <laughs>